Regarding the education system, our K-12 public educational system is under constant negative criticism. Do you believe the critics are right? What would you propose to address the unequal funding among school districts and the high dropout rates, particularly in poor districts? Big question. I, I, I will tell you this, that um, I, I had uh, five children who all are college graduates who all went to public schools. I've also been a big supporter of public schools. I've also given uh, a lot of uh, money personally to charter schools that were specialized doing certain things for children. It's, it's my belief that um, there, there's two aspects to it. I, I think that, and both can be true, I do believe that there's uh, efficiencies and things we can do to get more money to the students as opposed to administration. I do believe that we're underfunding education as well. We, we are, I think, somewhere around 47th or 48th per pupil funding. The, the, what made California great in the 1950s and 60s post-war was we made two massive investments. We made investments in infrastructure. We made investments in education and the future education of our children. All I can tell you is that when I worked my way through school, I graduated debt-free. And I got an RN and, a, and, a, and a, a, an attorney's license. My children, with heavy, being heavily subsidized by the bank of dad, uh, they still came out heavily in debt. And so, you know, you can, you can say, well, we've got to hold taxes down or fees, but what we're doing is we're loading more and more debt and fees upon our kids, and they're, they're graduating from school with massive debt. So it's my feeling we're failing that, our, 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 uh, our children. We have to find more ways to put money into education, but money alone isn't the answer. It also has to do, we have to look at the best innovations, the best practices, and keep on reforming education and making sure there isn't a disparity between uh, uh, high income areas where people uh, can help subsidize the public schools by giving them additional money versus the low income areas that don't have those kind of resources. The one thing we want in California and the nation is social mobility, where people are, can do better than their parents did, and we're losing that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay, so K through 12, education system. We do not have a spending problem. Again, I do not advocate that we have a spending problem because we spend uh, in excess of $10,000 per student to run our students through the public education system. Yet a private school that does a superior job, graduates more kids, has a better uh, score in every category, graduates and runs kids through the system at about $6,000 per pupil. So it's not about how much money you're throwing at the situation. However, I am an advocate that right now of the government money that goes into the education program, 60% of the money goes into the teachers in the classroom. 40% goes into administration. I am an advocate and I say so on my website and in all my literature that I would like to see 80% go into the teachers in the classroom, 20% go into administration. So that's one concrete change I would like to see. But I don't think um, the bottom line is that money is the solution. I think that all the schools are graded A through F. I think that grade should be put on the door. I think parents should know the quality education their child will receive when they go to that campus. That gives, and then I think parents should have the right to move their kids laterally to other systems and other schools that have a better grade on the door, just like when you go to a restaurant and you can find out the health code grade of that restaurant and you can choose to eat there or not. The low graded schools would die of attrition, they would be closed. And then what would happen is I would like to streamline the, streamline the charter school process allowing parents to come in and create charter schools faster and easier and charter schools have a much higher success rate and then the local students could come back and could attend the charter schools. We have four kids, they all were a part of the public school, six grandkids, they're all a part of the public school. I like public schools, I believe they can work and I would like to see us fix California education. I think I have good ideas, I've taught high school math, I can do this job. Elect me! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the last question will be part of your closing remarks, um, which for which you have each have five minutes. We'll start with you, Mr. Allen. Um, why are you seeking office of state assembly, and why should the voters in this district vote for you? Uh, I'm, I'm seeking office because um, when um, Noreen Evans turned out, um, a lot of people came to me and said, Michael, you have a, a reputation in our community of uh, bringing people together to be a problem solver. 
as I mentioned earlier this morning to another audience, um, I would much rather uh, lose an argument than uh, have a solution fail because uh, uh, we were more intent on winning the argument. So I'm a great believer in making things work. And uh, in our campaign, we walked over somewhere around 45,000 homes. I worked about, I, I knocked about 6,000, 7,000 doors. And what I heard over and over again is, I don't want you to hear, hear you blaming Republicans or blaming these people or Democrats. We want government to work. And so to me, uh, the reason I'm running for office is that I have, in my entire life, been very successful. I was very fortunate. And uh, I was fortunate uh, from the standpoint of being able to get an education here in California, raise a family. I have grandchildren now. I want to see the best for them. And I think what we need are people who are not, who are not uh, ideologically bent one way or another, but more open to everybody's input and finding a way forward for all of us. And um, to, uh, I, as I mentioned this morning with the other group, um, the first thing I want to do when I get to Sacramento is not sit down and start writing laws. I want to, I want to meet with the Republican legislators, the Democratic legislators, the governor's office, spend more time in the district. I'm a great believer that you measure seven times and cut once with whatever you do. I'm a cautious individual, but I'm also very pragmatic. I like what, what, what works. So we, we need to find ways to move people forward where they have jobs, where we can fund uh, our, our society. And that um, I, I'm also, maybe this is just the way I was born, I'm a great optimist. I believe in people, and I believe people can solve their problems. But the one way you do it is that I'm not adverse to conflict. The conflict can go either two ways. You can up the ante and escalate it and make it where everybody is fighting one another. Or you can take that conflict and say, let's get creative and figure out how we can work together for the better of everyone. And that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay, I'm running for office because I would like to fix the state of California, and I have big vision and great ideas, and I think that with collaboration we can fix California. I don't think it's a lost cause. I don't think it's a hopeless mess. I think it's something that can be turned around and be brought back to the great state that it once was back in its golden years. So I'll tell you just a really, really fast story. When I was living in Illinois, I had moved back there because my grandma uh, was really ill and she had been a very important caregiver in my life as my sis and I grew up in mostly 30 foster homes and um, that's why I became a foster mom and created a home and took in a hundred foster teen boys but back in Illinois I had a venture capital investment firm and, and many other businesses at the time and the Women's Entrepreneurial Institute had just really blossomed in America. So I flew back to Washington, D.C. and talked to, to talk to the chief of the Small Business Administration. I'm thinking he's just going to whoop me right into his office. He did not. They told me they could see me in three months. So I was leaving very dejected, and I found a piece of paper. They had just launched the Women's Entrepreneurial Institute, and they had the lady's name on that they had named as the chair. So I went back up the elevator, and I met her. She, she received me in. And I said, you know, I really want to do something to help women in southern Illinois. It's so depressed and discouraging. And she said, well, you know, we're thinking of creating an off-site bank called the SBA Loan Program, which will give direct loans, not be loan guarantees through the banks, but will actually be a direct bank and will fund it. So we ended up, I was the pilot program, I created the program, it was in southern Illinois, we opened the bank, it was funded, and we had about four or five million dollars, and I could put up to half a million dollars loans in these women and minority owned businesses. And we created thousands of jobs, and that pilot program went on to become a program that is nationwide and in use today. It's called the SBA 504 and 503 Loan Program, which is a little different than a loan guaranteed program, but I'm just saying to you that my life has been a life of big vision with no fear of going in and talking to anybody anywhere, having great belief that this girl that never even graduated from high school and had to go get her GED could open a bank in partnership with the federal government 
create thousands of jobs in a depressed economy like Illinois and have that program become a pilot program that all of America is using today, 36 years later. I am a woman of big vision. I am a woman you can trust and depend on. I am a woman who will make a great state legislator. You need to vote for Doris Gentry. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank both of you guys for coming down and uh, doing this. This is wonderful. I'd like to thank all of you guys in the audience for uh, being so cooperative and patient. And uh, again, thank the Chamber of Commerce and the. You know, Mira. My husband's at the back door with my cards. <laughs> <laughs> right now. All right. Thank you.